Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade equation with complex numbers. I call this homemade because I kind of thought about this idea, I didn't take it from a book or something else, but uh, easily you can make these problems. You just start with the solution and then you know work backwards. Okay, great. And if you make up any equations, please let me know in the comment section down below so I can make a video on those because I am always open to suggestions, especially on this channel because it's really hard to find a good problem every single day. You probably appreciate that, right? Anyways, this is A plus BI and my other channel is Cyber Math. Hopefully you also watch those videos. A little bit of commercial now, let's get to work. Okay, now first of all, before we start solving the problem, I want to tell you a couple things. If this was a multiple choice question, we could quickly test the choices, right? Now we have to solve it. Sometimes they make the problem harder or nearly impossible to guess. For example, they give you choices for this type of problem, but they ask you for the absolute value of Z or something like that, which means you can't just test the choices. If they ask for Z, that would be fairly easy, right? I mean, you could just plug it in and quickly check. How do we come up with these problems? Start with Z and then make up an equation. The left-hand side is totally made up and you can definitely change it and then so on and so forth. For example, for fun, you can introduce a square here or here or both of them, whatever you like, okay? There's a lot of ways you can do it. Now, anyways, let's get to work. And anyway, some people say, you're not supposed to say anyways, you're supposed to say anyway. Anyways, that's what I say. <laughs> Let's get to work. So, I'm going to start by assuming that Z is A plus BI. Why? Because it's the name of this channel. Sometimes we use X plus YI, especially for locus problems, because we're going to graph them, right, on the XY coordinate plane. But A plus BI is a more general approach. If Z is A plus BI, A, B are real numbers, by the way, don't forget that. And if you're new to complex numbers, make sure to watch the lecture videos that I made. Uh, I made a playlist of lecture videos, I think nine videos uh, going through all the basics of complex numbers, really basic stuff. Anyways, uh, if Z is A plus BI, I keep saying that, so I can't help it. Z bar, which is the complex conjugate of Z, is a minus bi. So in other words, it's the unique complex number that depends on z. When they are multiplied and added, we always get a real answer. And that's unique because no other number will satisfy it. And when I say number, I'm talking about complex numbers, right? Cool. What is the absolute value? Well, there's a really nice identity which may or may not help you for this problem. The absolute value of z is the square root of a squared plus b squared, if z can be written as a plus bi. But at the same time, it's also equal to the square root of z times z bar. Because if you multiply z times z bar from difference of two squares, I mean sum of two squares or both, you get a squared plus b squared. And if you square root it, you get the absolute value. But this is not very nice. It's actually better if you write it like this. z times z bar gives you the absolute value of z squared. A lot of times we use this format, but they're both fine, right? Anyways, so that's the relationship but we're not going to need it, probably, right? So z bar, let's go ahead and plug in everything. z bar is a minus bi plus two times. The absolute value is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So I'm going to use this version, not the z times z bar, because, I mean, it'll turn out to be the same thing, right? So it doesn't matter. And this equals 13 minus 4i. Your lucky number 13 there, right? So how did this become? How did this come about, right? Well, first of all, we have a real part and we have an imaginary part. Let's put the real parts together so that they kind of stay together nicely. And you could even put that in parentheses for emphasis. And a minus bi equals 13 minus 4i. Now notice that this is the real part and this is the real part. So this should equal 13. And from here, you can immediately say, because they both have minus signs, b equals 4. Nice. This is super duper nice. B is always going to be 4. There is a unique solution for that. But can we say the same thing for A? And guess what? The results of this problem are going to be a little surprising. I should have probably said it at the beginning because right now I kind of gave it away a little bit. But I mean, I was surprised too. I was like, does this really work? 
I mean, I had to plug it in to check. And while checking, I kind of found another thing that I find interesting. Anyways, I'll share with you in a little bit. So bear with me. So that's the B value. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 13. And then let's substitute um, 4 for B. Okay. This is the only B we have. So A plus 2 times A squared plus B squared, which is 16, equals 13. This kind of looks like a weird equation, right? It's radical. <laughs> so radical, man. So what we need to do, or we don't have to do it that way, but obviously you wouldn't want to square both sides, would you? Because that would still bring a radical. So if you want to get rid of the radical as soon as possible, isolate it on one side of the equation, doesn't matter which side, then square both sides. Because that's the kind of like the fastest way to get rid of it. And obviously you want to clear all the radicals. In some equations, you can never clear radicals. There are other ways to do it. Anyways, uh, on my other channel, CyberMath, I've made quite a few problems on radicals. You can go out and watch them. There's even a playlist called Radicals. So this is going to be 4a squared plus 64 after distributing the 4. And the right-hand side is 169 minus 26a plus a squared. Let's put everything on the same side. 4a squared minus a squared is 3a squared. And by the way, something funny about this, some people think that, okay, when you subtract a squared from 4a squared, a squared cancels out and we end up with 4. No, that's not true. You, you can't subtract like that because this is 1a squared. You have to subtract the numbers, the coefficients, distributive property, right? But if you were dividing these, then of course they would cancel out as long as a does not equal 0. Okay, 0 over 0 is indeterminate. Some people call it undefined. I call it indeterminate. And many teachers call it indeterminate. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's put everything on the same side. I get distracted. Uh, what is 169 minus 64? That's 105, but it's going to be negative instead of equal to 0. Awesome. You like that? Now, with the quadratic formula, obviously, you can solve this equation, but I'm going to show you a really cool method. And by the way, I'm planning to make a video on this because I'm just going to show you a real quick shortcut and you don't really have to understand every single thing here. Okay, don't worry about it. But first, I'm going to multiply these two numbers. That's going to give me negative 315. And this number, I'm going to put that here. And then here, I'm going to write uh, two numbers. Okay, basically, I'm looking for two numbers whose product is negative 315 and whose sum is 26. And those numbers are negative 9 and 35. Okay, now here's the shortcut. You take the opposite of these numbers, like 9 and negative 35, divide them by the coefficient of a squared, which is 3, and these are going to be the a values. There you go. So a can be 3 or a can be negative 35 thirds. It's like, how did this become? Okay, don't worry, we'll talk about that later. Uh, for right now, those are the solutions. This was a surprising one for me. Like, what? Are you serious? Is this going to work? Let's go ahead and test it out. And we know that B equals 4 all the time, right? We already said it. So now we have the following. Z bar plus 2 times absolute value of Z. Let's plug it in. Z bar, I mean, in this case is fairly easy. If Z is equal to 3 plus 4i, then I'm going to get Z bar as 3 minus 4i. And Z absolute value of Z is just going to be 5, 3, 4, 5. You know that, right? This is going to be 10 plus 3, which is 13 minus 4i. Yay, it checks. Obviously, you were expecting that to check, right? Now, on the other hand, if z is this weird number, negative 35 over 3 plus 4i, is this really going to work? Are you, are you like, sure? Let's check it out. Here's what I found. The z bar is going to be negative 35 over 3 minus 4i plus 2 times the absolute value. What is the absolute value of this number? 35 over 3 squared plus 4 squared. Now, when I expanded this, inside the radical, I got this. 35 squared plus 3 squared times 4 squared, which is 12 squared, divided by 3 squared, and I square root it. Okay, the, the bottom is fine because it's just 3, but what about the top? Is that an integer? Yes. This actually happens to be 37, so there you go. You got a Pythagorean triple, 35, 12, and 37. There's a way to get them. We'll also make a video on that. But here, you're going to multiply this by 2, so here's what you get. Negative 35 over 3 plus 2 times 37 over 3, which is 74 over 3, minus 4i. And this becomes 39 over 3, which is 13, minus 4i. And yay, that's the right-hand side, so we have success. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video or on the other channel. Uh, until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.